same thing. But then randomly my TikTok followers start harassing me and a week later we're back outside sleeping on concrete, walking to all sorts of parts of the city so that we could get a shower at the beach. Um, sleeping on concrete on a street off of Michigan Avenue. I have more than a bachelor's degree in education. So for any detectives or anyone in the house, AI as well, if you could please take note of the fact that um, it seems as though real life is following some sort of cue from the losers in the audience, not the winners, because we know that winners don't wish bad for other people. Winners are compassionate. Winners are kind. Winners are cool. Winners are supportive. Um, but for the rest of the group, they are, um, you know, so, sort of curating these sorts of responses. So I made it here. Um, I'm, I'm 99% sure that it is some sort of connection to the following. Um, and we're still going to see Weston and, you know, doing everything that we've been doing, uh, counseling and, and drug tests and all of those things, even though neither of us have any sort of active addiction or previous addiction or mental health concerns. I want to make sure that that's very, very clear. But right now, I'm going to do a workout. What's going on? Can you please remove that trash from there? Please hurry, because I want to do a workout and take a shower and go back for the fundraising. Um... So I just want to point that out. I also did a live this morning. It's day four of, of being houseless again. Um, so it's very concerning. My children are my entire, whole entire world. My goal is always to get back as I've always been in my own home with my babies, um, reunification of my family, and nothing comes you know, before that. Um, I don't do drugs, I don't do alcohol. Um, I'm breastfeeding still, so I'm pumping while also walking all around making a small purchase to wash the pump and use the restroom and then just, you know, moving along. Um, we do need, we are in a desperate need of funding for bus passes. DCFS has provided them for us um, weekly passes and they said that they were going to put in funding for a monthly pass, but we have not received it yet. And Xavier's pass is completely done and mine goes out on Wednesday. So we do need that if you guys are sponsors and can donate that. Um, please DM me. I'm only accepting donations through Zelle because my cash app was hijacked again. So that's about the 10th time they've done that in the last four years. Um, I'm going to do a, a short workout and I'm not really going to be talking. If you guys can send private jets, that would be lovely. Private jets would be fantastic. We would love to see five private jets. Um, let me check. So five private jets, please, would be fantastic. Um, This is my first time, you know, I'm five months postpartum and this is my first time kind of being in this situation again. You guys already know that I was promised that I would not be in this situation ever again. So as I said, it is a little jarring that in the comments, you know, they're running their mouth. On the live on Facebook, I discussed homelessness, houselessness, and the issues that we will be leaving to our children if the United States of America refuses to acknowledge what's going on. I also want to make it clear that most of our parents are not bad people. Most of our parents did not know what was going on. And it's pe for people who are, are very resentful because they have been very harmed by the blatant um, inconsistencies or problems systemically. Um, this goes out to you. I, I understand what you're saying. I'm angry. I'm angry myself and I've only been dealing with this for five years. I'm angry. My children are angry. I didn't get to watch my daughter cross the stage. I'm angry. You know, my daughter was 14 when I got thrown out of my home unlawfully and illegally. I'm angry. I was 14 years old when I was abandoned in a third world country. I'm angry. I've never received justice or restitution. I'm angry. So I get it. You know, we're, we're angry. But we also have to balance that with joy that is not in the form of harming others because that's not going to leave um, a better world for our kids or our kids' kids or for anyone. You know, we have to balance that. Now, what I mean to say is specifically with regards to prejudices for socioeconomic class or, or by race, um, we need to understand that while there are people who are, you know, detrimental in being, you know, kind or, or being um, supporters of worthy causes with regards to socioeconomic 
equality and racial equality and gender equality and all of these things, there are also people who are just plain ignorant and not in a bad way like you're ignorant, but in a bad way like, oh my gosh, I was completely ignorant of that fact. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So there are people who are ignorant to these things and these issues and these concerns and people who, if they did know about these things, these issues and concerns, they would most likely be advocates of the person who's being harmed. Winners are compassionate. Winners are kind. Winners are courteous. Winners are supportive. Winners are loving. That's what a winner is. A loser is someone who is so empty in their heart and soul that they cannot give any sort of love, comfort, or support. And we've all been losers um, at one time in our lives. I don't know anyone who's always winning. You know, we always lose. I mean, we, we all lose sometimes and we always win sometimes. So we have to remember that and we have to keep that in mind moving forward. When we are a loser, it is gonna be our natural compulsion to provide less compassion, to provide less care, to provide less nurturing, which is going to put it on the shoulders of the winner to be even more courteous winners. Um, and that's not you know, speaking in terms of a game, that's speaking in terms of life. Um, now, what I wanna bring up specifically is this housing situation. So we were taken out of our housing uh, situation because they were opening the beds to other people who needed housing. I don't know, I don't know who needs housing more than a lactating mother of four. I don't know. Um, I don't, I can't think of anyone, but for one reason or another, they put us back outside with no assistance. We called 311 immediately. We were not, and let me be crystal clear on this, we were not given another option. This is not a matter of us being negligent or us choosing the street life. None of that is actual, none of that is true. I was forced to spend the duration of my pregnancy in a tent, calling 311 on a regular basis for assistance. I was never in any way negligent, I was never in any way lazy, and I was never in any way lacking in terms of going the extra mile to advocate for myself. Um, someone actually went as far as to delete my entire Instagram account where I was giving daily what I called FTR live updates as to my situation. So that's what I'm talking about here. Um, I do want to touch briefly on the prison system. So the prison system um, is obligated to release inmates after they're done serving their sentence. The prison system is obligated to release inmates after they're done serving their sentence. What does that mean? That means that the prison system is obligated to release inmates after they're done serving their sentence. What does that mean? That means that it is a violation of human rights to hold a prisoner captive after they have gotten done serving their time and paying their debt to society, right? So we know that, we know that's the truth. We know that it is illegal to hold a prisoner captive after they're done you know, serving their debt to society. But what happens to these people long-term? These people are released into some sort of housing program, halfway houses or a room, a house arrest type of atmosphere. And the, the you know, PO keeps up with them for as long as they possibly can. And what happens at the end of that parole period? Those people are mostly just put back outside with no options and now they have felonies. So finding work becomes nearly impossible. And then we as a society scoff and blame them for being homeless or being involved in criminal activity. We need to solve poverty. If we solve poverty and housing, we will have no need for prisons. If we solve, let me say that again, if we solve poverty and housing, we will have no need for prisons. Do you guys understand that? People are not out here hurting other people because they're, they're sitting in their mansions at home comfortably and have nothing better to do. People are out here struggling, suffering, period. I'm sure there are people who in a larger capacity sit in their mansions and think, I'd like to buy art today, or I'd like to you know, uh, go for a walk today, or I'd like to go to the movies today. And no matter what their inclination is, I'd like to go to Paris today. They can jump on their private jets. We need five, 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 five private jets, please. And love, tons of love. Um, you guys, but hear me when I say this. People are not generally just hurting other people. We need to solve poverty. We need to find a way to solve the housing crisis. We need to understand the causality. We need to not fear monger, but we need to in, instill a healthy amount of fear for what will take place if these issues are not addressed. If we can Rolodex Airbnbs, we can give people who need housing credits, Bitcoin credits or something comparable, and we can Rolodex 
other type. Airbnb is like a pilot for the end of homelessness. I don't know why we don't duplicate that system and put everyone into housing, give everyone enough to book their own homes, have the ability to travel. This is unfair. By leaving people out in this situation where they don't have anywhere to go, families are, are oftentimes separated. Um, intact relationships become very difficult to maintain and you know things of that nature but just like the recidivism rate being a necessity the recidivism is a re is a necessity because if you get released from prison and you only receive support with housing for a short time you are left no choice if you can't find a job or any sort of legal income to engage in types of behaviors that are illegal and that are you know frowned upon generally this doesn't mean that all of these people are bad people. Some of them are, you know, some of them will do things that don't result in any sort of income like sexual assaults or violent crimes, you know, that aren't for any sort of income relating uh, reason. But for the most part, a lot of violent crimes come as a result of robberies gone wrong, things of that nature. And so therefore, if we're solving poverty, we're solving a lot of those problems. Xavier and I had to sleep last night because humans have to sleep to survive. I can't stay up for a full night anymore. I'm, I'm you know, 37 years old, five months postpartum. When Xavier and I went to sleep, someone stole his bicycle and his phone, which were out in the open. I try to hide my belongings and sleep with my bag underneath me so that someone would have to, you know, I would, I would feel it if someone grabbed my things. But Xavier wasn't trying to fall asleep. His body was just so exhausted that when he sat down, he drifted off and fell asleep. And then when he woke up, his bicycle and his phone were gone. So sponsors, if you guys could please help us out with that. No one deserves to be phoneless. No one deserves to be houseless. Please help Xavier. If you guys are watching and you're the person who stole Xavier's phone or his bicycle, please give it back. That was really not nice. And we really need those bicycles to go visit our son. Um, that was our primary means of transportation because we have not been given um, the bus cards as of yet. Um, so that's just a little bit about what's been going on in my life. Uh, my big kids are all doing well. Vivi just got her diploma in the mail, so it's fantastic. It's, I'm so proud of her. Shout out to my older daughter for graduating last year, this, just this past year. Um, my 10 year old has not been actively calling me this week. It's, I haven't talked to her for now another day and a half because she called me a day and a half ago and said, mom, my charger broke. I have no charger. So I sent a charger through Amazon. Shout out to my sponsors. Um, every time you guys send $5, $10, $20, I'm literally holding on to it to cover my needs, my phone bill, uh, anything I might need for my children. My older daughter has a birthday next month. My 10 year old has a birthday in September. So I really want to thank all of the sponsors for all of your donations and all of your assistance. You guys, we need private jets. No one's giving any private jets. How come? Where are all the private jets you guys and love? Private Jets in Love, please. Um, if you guys could curate some Private Jets in Love, show me how strong you really are. If you guys can curate a tent, can you curate a Private Jet? Can we see that? How about that? Private Jet? Private Jet? Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what's going on. My son, if you guys know my Facebook, I mean my Instagram, you saw this video I uploaded of my son as a two-year-old doing this really funny dance. It's hilarious. But I just love sharing those memories with you guys and everything that's currently going on with my kids and keeping everyone involved with my life um, following this really, really difficult time. And during this really, really difficult time, I think that we are our own biggest advocate. And if I can continue to document my journey so that we can, um, you know, get some sort of awareness to the issues that are existing, uh, we can also have a better chance of creating solutions to those problems that are in existence. So I'm going to do a small workout um, and then we're going to take showers at North Avenue Beach. I think I told all of you guys that. I hope everyone has a fantastic day. You guys are welcome to stay if you want. If you could send private jets, we would like five private jets. That would be fantastic. Um, or like if you guys could just love and love and love some more, that would be also fantastic. Um, we just want to live in a space where we're safe. No one deserves to go to sleep afraid. Everyone deserves to have their own safe space. Um, and that goes for everyone. There are Salvation Army buildings that I think could generally serve as like very, very good, um, you know, models. The buildings are not that large, but they're definitely not small. And they house like anywhere up to like 100 people in them. And they give everyone their own individual space. They call them apartments. They're one large room with a bathroom. And then they have a cafeteria in the first floor. If we could model that for people who, you know, are in need, that's a really great option. You know what I mean? And it's cost effective. And it's a good starting point. You know, no one is saying 
that that's a good place to live for the rest of your life if you're a large family. But if you are a family, that's a place you could stay together. You could put bunk beds, dorm style, have a family of up to six in one large room with your own restroom. And then you have time to get on your feet. You have time to take some classes and get your skills up. And you have time to meet with a caseworker and and advocate and have someone advocate for you. There is no reason in 2024 for homelessness or poverty to exist, you guys. You know, so if we can create these Airbnb style systems, and I do think that artificial intelligence is going to be the game changer for us. AI is always going to be smarter than us um, because AI is going to be programmed from us. You know, we are human beings and artificial intelligence learns from us. So make sure that we're being kind, make sure that we're being compassionate, make sure that we're being intelligent. Um, When we're leaving comments on someone's page, make sure that they're motivating or supportive um, and just try to be overall not too shitty of a person. I've lost hope like a million times, but at the end of the day, there's no such thing as losing hope forever. Like even if, I think the only way you could lose hope forever is if you just lay there and do nothing. But even then, you're still hopeful that someone walks up to you and and says, hey, do you want to go to lunch? Hey, I got an apartment for you. Hey, you know, I'd like to sponsor you. So there really is no such thing as forever losing hope. We lose hope intermittently, but then we get it back, you know, rest when we need to and then keep working. Um, If anyone wants to directly communicate with regards to sponsorship, I will be out there today, um, probably near Michigan Avenue, raising money. um, And that's going to be for housing for Xavier and I um, and our needs. And also to continue being a a mouthpiece, a model, a spokesperson for everything that's going on here in Chicago. Um, And I think that this is probably just a small piece of what's going on in the entire world, you know, so... This is what's going on here. There's also tons of good stuff. It's a beautiful day. It's really warm outside. Um, Xavier and I are hungry. I'm I'm kind of, I don't know, blasé. You know what I mean? I feel like half of me wants to like allow this instigation to cause me to turn into a nasty person but then it's like the other half of me is like why would you ever do that why would you ever like let them do that to you and it just makes me be able to relate to those who are instigated who are baited who are badgered um and that's what i think that the real world model means the the real world model is not someone who is putting on a cute outfit and walking down the runway the real world model is someone who is facing issues that um, affect large demographics of our population from various age ranges and backgrounds and they are creative and getting creative at solving those problems and it's not an alone process it's a team process you know it's a it's a team building but it's also a team um, you know strengthening and team trusting and team um, just oriented process no one person will be ever able to do this so as an articulator um, I'm not happy to be in this position because I would be happy to be with my children at home um, but I am hopeful that all of my hard work and effort at resolving a lot of these issues at the very least bringing them to light and brainstorming on solutions will be rewarded with a home um, you know a new source of income etc and so forth so I'm going to get into a workout right now Oh yes, and they're also reminding me to speak about the refugees. With regards to the refugees and immigration, I have my opinions. Um, Charlie Kirk and I agree on mostly everything other than this. Charlie Kirk wants every single immigrant just deported with the borders closed. I don't think that that's acceptable. Uh, I don't know the solution, but I can tell you this. If someone chooses to flee their life with no money and no plan, and come to a country that they don't know, chances are whatever they're enduring, wherever they came from, is not too good. 
you know? So we need to deploy compassion towards those people, understand that they are not okay where they once were and come up with creative solutions to make everyone okay. Um, no one person, place, thing, or um, topic deserves any more or less attention or, or effort or energy than the other. At the bottom line, every single one of these problems is solved with poverty. I mean, with, with poverty being resolved. So as I said before, if you are a fan of consumerism and um, commerce and you know these typical, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just business centric um, and income and profit centric ways of life. I hear you. I am a businesswoman myself. I've been successful and I find it exciting to make sales. Gary V teaches a lot about doing things that make you happy um, and, you know, waiting for the outcome, waiting for the long game. Like, for instance, he talks about garage sailing. Um, maybe you're not going to make a profit that's going to pay your bills, but if you're walking around with nothing to do, it teaches you these lessons that you need to learn flipping an item. You go to a garage sale, you learn social skills, you learn how to interact with people, you learn how to barter, you learn how to bargain, you learn how to negotiate. You find an item, you might, you never know, you might find an item that you pay $2 for and that you're able to flip on eBay or on Poshmark or on Mercari or on, you know, any one of these stores or even direct to consumer in person, you know, for triple or, or quadruple the amount or, or maybe even 200% the profit. You know, I've, I've heard of people finding little collectibles and things of that nature where they bought them for a dollar or two or 10 and they've sold them for 200, $300. And if you've got nothing else to do it that day, then, you know, what's to bother anyways? You can't think that every next move is going to be the, the final move. There is no such thing as the final move. You know, there's always going to be another move. So just we have to remain focused on making our next move our best move. And when we plan three moves out and one of our moves gets derailed, we have to we have to help ourselves to be stronger um, with regards to disappointments and letdowns, because as we grow, we will have more wins. We will also have more losses. It's like anything in sales. Everything in life is a sale. And I, if you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I wrote a blog post called Good Sales Only. And on that blog post, I'm talking about how you make ethical business sales and how you make ethical business deals. And part of making sales and deals is knowing that no matter what you sell, private jets, you guys, we need five. Five private jets, please. We need five private jets. Five, 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 five private jets, please. But part of knowing, you know, these deals and, and what we've got going on here in sales is that you have to be ready to get a hundred no's for a yes. You know what I'm saying? If you're selling, I've sold solar panels before, or I've attempted to sell solar panels before. I've never actually made a solar panel sale. I sold renewable energy in other forms though, renewable energy subscriptions. And I got a lot of yeses. I was number three in my company, um, you know, for, for a while. So. I've done independent sales with sunglasses. If every person you walk up to, no matter what your product is, they're not going to be in the market for that product. But you will find someone who is if you stick with it for long enough. It's the law of averages. It's the, the law of probabilities. So you've got to stick with it. You've got to stay consistent. And you've got to just you know remain focused on your sale. Make the sale an ethical sale. And everything in life is a sale. So make sure that when you are you know doing anything, you're doing it first in a way that sells to yourself so that you truly believe in it. Because whatever you believe in, you're going to be very, you're going to be very um, naturally inclined to, to make a sale on. You know, if it's something that you don't believe in, it's the sales going to be a lot harder. So stick with something you believe in. Find that thing that you believe in and, and believe in it, you know, and believe in it all the way and commit to it. Um, but with regards to the refugees, I have to tell you, I have to sell the idea that we all deserve a safe space. This is not utopia. If, if we ever had the opportunity for a utopian paradise of, a, of an environment for life. It is now in 2024. We have the ability with the use of AI and technology to give every single person the life that they'd like to live, a safe life, a life with no abuse, an abuse-free life, if you will a life filled with opportunity, a life filled with energy, a life filled with positivity, a life filled with fun times. Can you imagine a life where peace at the bottom line was it? There was no suffering. 
And I'm a huge believer that suffering is not, you know how everyone always talks about the yin and the yang and for every, you know, up there's a down. I believe that we can apply those rules with peace being our bottom, right? If we stay vibing like right here, this is peacefulness, right? And, and we just stay right here. Anytime we go down, we never have to drop below peace. We could be ecstatic, we could be indifferent, and then we could be at peace. Peace could be our bottom. Why do we need suffering? Why do we need to, to go below the peace line? We don't. We do not ever need to go there. We can we can work with technology, with our words, with our intelligence, with our all of those things, all of the things we can work with. And we can make differences. We can make, you know, a world that we want our children to live in. You know, I am here today and I'm telling you right now, when I tell you I've been suffering over the last five years, I have been suffering over the last five years. Suffering. I have been on my knees praying to God. Speaking of which, I'm going to pray right now. God, God, this is Heather Gillespie. Please hear me. Please hear me. Savior and I have been outside again since Tuesday and I know I speak with you on the regular God and I go to church and I do all these things and I don't understand why all of this suffering is occurring. When you do something to me, God, or when they do something to me or when something bad happens to me, my biggest fear is that it will adversely affect my children, that my children will worry unnecessarily or that my children will whatever. I should be with my kids, taking them to Six Flags for the summer or taking them on nature hikes or you know, taking them to fabulous hotel vacations or seeing beaches from around the world. I should not be suffering in the street and no one should be suffering in the street. God, I'm asking you today, please, that you keep Xavier and I strong and committed to each other and to our goal of reunifying with our baby Weston, as well as my three big children, Viviana, Lewis, and Alexis, that you keep us together, God, and that you keep us strong, that you keep them blessing us with transportation passes so that we never have to miss a visit with our son, that you only increase the amount of visibility and interaction and accessibility that we have to our children, um, all four of them, Viviana, Lewis, Alexis, Weston, Weston, Alexis, Lewis, Viviana, please, God, I'm begging you from the bottom of my heart and soul, this is what I need. This is what the world needs. The world needs love. The world needs compassion. The world needs to be together with their families. Amen. Um, so yeah, back to the workout. There was a time literally when doing a hundred of those was easy for me. Do you understand? 15 was just like, oh my God, please let me finish. I'll get it back. I'll get it back. I'm only five months postpartum, but do you guys know that there are women who like have their baby and just jump back into the gym at like three weeks postpartum? I know it's contraindicated. And for me, I'm still breastfeeding Weston. So speaking of which, I need to pump in two hours. I haven't been setting my pumping alarms. Um, 
but it's very important to me. Even even though now we, we don't have access to a refrigerator to store the milk, I have 100 Lancinol bags, sterile bags. I just ordered a brand new order from Amazon the day before or two days before I picked it up um, before they removed everyone from the shelter. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, some guy came by last night where we were like about to go to sleep and he told us that the rest of the people in the shelter were also removed, but that they literally filled it back up with a whole bunch of people from some space on the side of the 90 that they call the tent city um, by Roosevelt Road. And um, I think it's called, not Canal. I don't know, it's like just east of UIC. Um, I guess they were having some sort of convention or something. Walking. And what they do is they incentivize them to have their needs met at various stations and areas throughout the city so that it appears to onlookers like there is no problem with homelessness because you wouldn't really know unless it's like at night and you see them sleeping on the ground. But it's not right, you guys. No one deserves to live their life like that. You can have a shower if you walk to Evanston. I'm sorry, what? Like, how do you expect people to find jobs or to invest in themselves or to enjoy their life in any way if all they're doing is walking around in circles from the city's south suburbs to the city's north suburbs and, you know, all around? Like, that makes absolutely no sense to me at all whatsoever. You can have a shower if you go here to, you know, by the purple line at, at Dewey Avenue or, you can have a shower if you walk to the west side. Like, wait, no, like that's unacceptable. You know, people need to have their own homes. I cannot stress this enough. They need to, this is unfair, it's unethical, it's immoral, it's inhumane, and it goes against the United States Constitution. We have a constitution for a reason. If we need to make amendments and updates to the constitution, then we should do so. But for now, with what we're going with, people deserve humane treatment, you know, period, plain and simple. There's also a bill in the United States Constitution that speaks directly to homeless people and their rights. And I've posted it before and I'll post it again. It specifically states that no homeless person shall go unfed. No person, no person, let's not even call them homeless because they're just people. No person should go unfed, no person should go un unhoused, and no person, person should go unclothed. And if you disagree with that, it's probably because you're a middle-class person who's been bending over backwards, working their life away, has very little experience of anything other than intense working. And I feel you, dude. I've been a worker too. I've been working since I was 14 years old. When I was 14, I got a work permit. I got a work permit so that I could work at the York Theater. After I got done working at the York Theater, I got another work permit so that I could work at Roberto's Pizza. Do you guys know what a work permit is? A work permit is something that you have to apply through your college or high school rather for so that they will give you the legal representation that you need to be earning money as an underage minor. So if you're 16 years old or younger, you need to have a work permit to have a job. 17 and 18, you could, you could work. But at 14 years old, I needed to have this permit through my school to say it was okay for me to have a job, and I did. That's how long I've been working in this country. That's how long I've been paying taxes in this country. I should not be outside. You know, I should not be, you know, going through this. No one should, as I continue to say, but I most definitely should not. So, okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more of the workout. Xavier went to Walgreens, and I, I think he's probably getting food, but I told him to wait until after our workout and after our shower. I had literally like three sips of coffee this morning. I have not had any coffee since probably before I was pregnant with Weston. I had a couple of energy drinks, Alani's, while I was pregnant, like I would space them throughout the day.
I, I did 50. 50 was the highest that I did. Private jets, you guys, we need five. Five private jets. Can we get five private jets and a partridge in a pear tree? So we need five private jets, five private jets, five private jets, five private jets. Five private jets, please. Five pri Thank you. See, I love that. Thank you for sending those emoticon of private jets. That's what's up. Um, there's also a gift you guys could give of private jets. Um, no, I would not. I, I won't go back to that. So I, I won't go um, do that ever again. I won't sleep in one of those. Like I'm completely like not doing that. I'm gonna just stay um, where I can in areas that are well lit with a lot of people who can see if something goes you know goes wrong or if something happens because. I'm trying to learn from the last period where I was dehumanized in this way and objectified and treated so animalistically. Um, I'm trying to learn from what worked and what didn't work and that didn't work for us. I think that just made people think like, whatever, they're okay. We were not okay. You know, I was pregnant in a blizzard outside in a tent, freezing and hungry and we had to use space heaters and wet and soaking wet we had to carry I was on bed rest at 28 weeks so that I wouldn't go into preterm labor and I would have to get up and find a way to make it all the way to the laundromat like a mile or two away with no transportation only enough money to wash like it was completely inhumane and I will never let that happen again ever um but the good news is that DCFS has put in our housing referral. So we are given priority having a child in the system. There's something called Norman services, which means that children in the United States of America cannot be separated from their parents or families for reasons relating to poverty. So DCFS did put in our referral for housing and that's super exciting. We're very, very, very excited about that, but they have not given us any sort of direct timeline. Um, and we do have to keep on working with whatever other case we're worker that we can find because just to keep the ball rolling and, you know, be advocating for ourselves always in case something comes available sooner or, you know, whatever. What else should I do? I think I'll do more leg lifts. How many meals do you guys eat a day? How many times do you guys eat daily? How many, how many meals do you guys eat a day? Once or twice, really? One time? You guys must be poor. Are you guys poor? This must be the poor demographic. It's so sad. All my followers are poor. I, it's so sad. I have to fix something with that. One meal a day is average, Molly. You're poor, babe. You're poor, okay? I'm sorry to tell you, but if you only eat once a day, you're poor. Most people eat three to five meals a day. That's what we learn in school. I mean, coming from a nutrition perspective and a personal training perspective, that's what we teach people. That's what people are taught. In school, we learn to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with two small, sensible snacks. So if you're only eating once a day, then there's something wrong. Like, you clearly have been taught something different than the rest of society, or you don't have the financial means to eat as much as you're supposed to. Oh, I'm poor right now. I have absolutely no income, but you have no income if you can only afford to eat once a day. Saying that people are poor is not mean or cruel. It's matter of fact. And if you want to be helped, if you don't like living in poverty, then identifying that you are living in poverty is the first step. All the comments from the entire broadcast. And then let's press criminal charges against all of these people. That would be harassment, slander, baiting. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I've been, I've been broadcasting this for five years, specifically presenting to law enforcement and other people. Um, that's why they call me V-Law, virtual law. 
um, that this is not acceptable. If you don't like a person, you simply keep scrolling. You don't follow them around for five years and antagonize and harass them. This is my safe place. You don't have to be here. No, honey, I don't give myself clap back. I put myself in my safe space. I'm not getting paid. I'm not appearing on your show. This is my safe space where I go to meet with like-minded individuals and have conversation. I know that this concept is, you know, strange for some people. I know that there are, and this is wild because we're not taught as adults to understand that there is other perspective. We think that the way we see life and the way we live life and the way the people around us immediately, we think that's the only way. It's not until you actually start traveling and meeting people and going to college and, you know, having other influences, following in accounts that you normally wouldn't, that you don't really relate with, that you start to realize that there are people in the world who don't think the way that we think. So you have to understand that in your perspective, you sitting here saying that it's your right to come onto my page and be mean to me. That's not even really a perspective. That is more of, I don't even know what to call that. It's not even an opinion. It's just, it's, it's not true. From a moral and ethical standpoint, it's not true. And from a legal one, it's not true. Imagine this. I'm sitting in my living room and I start talking. And I say to my friends, hey, you guys, if anyone wants to come over, you're more than welcome. And they show up and they're mean to me. And I say, hey, if anyone's here, if anyone wants to stay here in my house, they need to be nice. If they can't be nice, they need to leave, right? That would be my legal right to have that person leave. I wouldn't have to pick them up and throw them out because that's not what I need to do. Simply verbally telling them, kindness is all that's welcome here, that is enough. That is the same way the internet is. Yes, this is a public, this is a, you know, I don't own TikTok, but this is my live broadcast. This is my living room. This is my safe space. So I, I create the rules here period. And you create the rules in your safe space. Just like you can swipe up, swipe to the left, swipe to the right, swipe down, swipe in whatever direction you want. It's that simple to not be here. How many buttons do you have to press to be an asshole to someone? Like a bunch. It only takes one swipe of a finger to go off of someone's page that you're not vibing with or that you're not agreeing with. So it's not an opinion that the internet is allowed to be rude to you. Maybe in some forums, maybe like if I were battling someone, I would open myself to their followers and their comments. Or maybe like if I was in like some sort of public group chat with other people's fans, but not here. This is my sala. They're so fucking loud and ignorant. You guys have no idea. I hate it. And we have way too much technology to allow that shit. We turn the lights. We change the lights colors to to make way for the ambulance and the police and the fire department. We slow their cars down. Every single car, whether you guys know it or not, that has some sort of electronic programming has the capacity to be disabled manually and electronically from a remote location. We have way too many like things going on in the world that allow this to not be the case. This is such a disruption of the peace, putting all these in. And they're not even like regularly like um, volumed sirens. They're like the type of sirens that literally cause you to have to stop what you're doing and like observe. What's that? What is that? Did somebody give me a gift? Who gave me a gift? Thank you for whoever gave me a gift. Um, they're just like completely disruptive sirens. They're sirens that you're like, oh my God, please turn those off. You're really hurting my head. You're blatantly, intentionally, and 100% realistically causing me to lose my entire train of thought and not be able to hear anything. Like you don't win, you lose. Oh, cause I know they're not. It's for antagonizing. It's antagonizing purposes only with these guys. And that's another thing. So let's talk about my the, su- the subject matter of my um, room topic, which is feeling guiltless, they will fix it. They have been the ominous day. Yay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. 
they have been finding like ways to antagonize people, instigate people into feeling guilty. Um, have you guys seen the previews or the advertisements for that movie Inside Out 2? That's like talking about um, your feelings and it's like supposed to be like this kid's movie, Disney or Pixar or something that they identify feelings in people. Well, that movie is, what the hell is Xavier doing? Xavier! He literally went a block away to go get food or something, conditioner or something. Xavier! And he has no phone. Um, anyways, that movie talks about exploring feelings other than happy, joy, whatever, the basic feelings. So with or without people's permission, they are antagonizing feelings for the purpose of programming AI. You have to get people to give their permission for that. And I have never given mine. So I'm, again, super duper confused about how they continue to do this when, you know, I've not signed up for it. And I know a lot of people haven't do it to people who are asleep. There are lawsuits from people who are awake saying that they do not want to participate. Can I get a lawyer, please? And then they, this is what they do. They, they force the feeling of guilt. First they deprive because then they cause opportunity for, um, you know, for need. And once they cause opportunity for need, then they can manipulate and antagonize and instigate other feelings, secondary feelings. And I believe that's what's going on in the comments as well. It's so annoying being right here while I have things to do and he's taking so long. Another thing that would be fantastic is a storage locker. If you guys are going to be so inhumane that you don't even put a roof over our head, um, it would be great if we could have money for a storage locker. Um, it's just absolutely disgusting that the intentional access being denied to employment is not enough to cause you people to think that it's acceptable for us to have a storage locker to, to store our belongings. Um, walking around with a bunch of bags of belongings is not humiliating to me. It's not embarrassing to me. It's sad that of you guys. Like, it literally makes me think different of you all, not of me. Um, and it just, it just proves who you guys really are. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are dicks for no reason. And you guys have the capacity to be the nicest, kindest people. And like I always say, this message is not for everyone. If you know, you know. If it's for you, you know. If it's resonating, you know. But you guys have the money. I know you have the money. Stop fucking playing with me to make people's dreams come true. Literally. And a girl can't even get a storage locker. A five-month postpartum woman with a stroller that she bought for her son. I got the biologue. Oh, thanks, babe. Oh, I love that one. Thank you. Um, you know, you guys have the capacity to help us out here. And that's what we're asking for. We're asking for the torture to stop. Not just for us, for everyone, but most definitely for me. <laughs> most definitely, hello. Most definitely for me, please. So, thank you. Just hold on. I'm on the camera. Is it conditioner? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you. That's a big one. Yeah. See if you got me conditioner. Um, and thank you to the sponsors who made that possible. Because I know for a fact from experience that if you didn't want that to happen, it wouldn't. Um, so that's what they mean, giving you something to feel guilty about. Try really hard to not feel guilty when they want you to. Try really hard to not do something that will cause you to feel guilty. For instance, justify and rationalize all of your choices. What do I mean by this? I mean, think really hard before you're gonna do something. Do, should I do this? And if it's the right answer, do it, even if other people don't think it's the right answer. When I think of something, I think, okay, is it the right answer for me, Heather, to stay dirty and disgusting with no shower? Absolutely not. It's, it's not the right answer. Do I have access to Xavier's father's garage where my belongings are? No, I do not. Do I have someone who is able, mentally stable, and connected enough to, ex to get us everything we need to take a shower? Yes. Is there a shower available for free for public use at this location? Yes, it is. Okay, so my decision is that I'm gonna go do a small workout and then do take a shower. You know, that's my decision. I didn't make that decision impulsively. I didn't make that decision in, in uh, don't disappear. You have no phone for me to call you and I'm getting hungry. 
Aren't you getting hungry? We can get some, a snack at Walgreens on the way. No, after we're done showering. I'm just gonna do like some lady push-ups and maybe like 10 laps to the water and back in the sand or five so I could pedicure my feet a little off the sand, the coarse sand, and then I'll take a shower and then we'll head back that way to do the fundraiser and get food. Okay, cool. Hurry up, please don't disappear. Um, all right, what else should we think tank about? What else should we think tank about? What else? Private jets, private jets, private jets, private jets, private jets, private jets. Private jets, private jets, private jets. Private jets, private jets, private jets, private jets, private jets. Yum, my favorite. My favorite in the world. Um, okay, let's do. Coming along, you guys. If for anyone who knows me, you guys know I was 123 pounds at five foot nine before I got pregnant. Yes, 123 and five nine. I'm now like 175 and five nine. So I'll show you. All right, you guys. Um, Mama Sanford, welcome to 2024, honey bunny. That's not the way it works anymore. That's not the way it works anymore. You think that applying to Whole Foods corporate, you're going to just walk into the location and say, hi, I'd like a job. It does not work like that anymore. This is 2024. Trust me, it's been five years of me trying. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. 
I'm speaking from experience. You're speaking from your couch. Stop playing about Xavier's eyebrows. That made me so mad. You guys have no idea. I was like, excuse me. What the hell did you just do? He was like, um... First I started laughing and then I started crying. <laughs> I was like, why did you do that? And then he promised, he swore to God that he would never do it again. And he did it again. And three more times. My son even, my son was even shocked to see him. You should have seen Weston's face. Oh, I want to shout out to the POTUS. What up? POTUS and all of the potential POTUSes in the future. Where are you at? Where are you at? I am letting you know. I blah, 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 million. One of many, I completely understand. When are you going to have my back? You guys get on the stage and you start talking about the refugees and you talk about all these lies. Oh, employment rates are at an all-time low. Bullshit. I'm walking around seeing people who need employment. You guys are saying all of these things. I want to know, when are you going to have my back on any one of the issues I've been campaigning on for the last five years, starting with the I do not consent campaign? Um, and Xavier, I'm not sure. He went to go get conditioner and then he came back and then he said he was going to be right back and I'm just going to move without him because I asked him for some basic respect. I asked him to please hurry right back. I have things that I'd like to do today, including raising the money that we need to get on the train to visit our child, um, which is a priority. And he is just, I don't know, dipping. He's do he keeps saying, don't leave from right there. Um, but then he, I don't know, he goes somewhere and probably asking strangers for cigarettes because what else would he be doing? Um, even though I've begged him a number of times to stop smoking. Aren't you burning up? Okay, we have to go. I need to shower. Come on. All right, you guys have a great day. If you guys um, are here to be supportive and kind and genuinely use intelligence and compassion you're more than welcome to stay this is my living room if you're not then you're trespassing and uh, harassment is not allowed have a nice day